Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Game theory requires a bit of calculus, and today is our first dose of it. We're going to learn about geometric series, which will actually make our lives easier in the future. So here's a setup. In the movie IQ, Meg Ryan is standing two feet away from Tim Robbins. She tells him that he can walk half the distance to her. Then he can walk half the remaining distance. Then he can walk half the remaining distance again. And so forth. If he ever reaches her, he can kiss her. Should Tim Robbins play Meg Ryan's game? You've probably heard some form of this before, and you might know it as one of Zeno's paradoxes. And you might also think that Tim Robbins will never win. To see why, take a look at the problem geometrically. Robbins will move one, fo one foot forward after the first step, and he'll have one foot remaining after. Then on the second step, he'll walk six inches, but you'll still have six inches left. Now on the third step, he moves three inches and has three inches remaining. And on the fourth, he'll move one and a half inches and still have one and a half inches remaining to Meg Ryan. So it looks like no matter how many steps he takes, Robbins will still have to move exactly the amount he just walked if he wants the kiss. That means he'll get close, but it seems like he'll never quite make it. However, let's try looking at this numerically instead. So he moves a foot, then a half a foot, then a quarter of a foot, then an eighth of a foot. Now you should notice that there's a common ratio between these. Basically, if you multiply the previous step by a half, you get the next step. That shouldn't be much of a surprise, as that's exactly how we defined the process originally. Now, eventually, we're going to want to reach a general solution to this. So I'm going to start replacing these numbers with variables. And we start by swapping the ones with x. So now the first step is x feet long, the second step is half of x, then a quarter of x, and then an eighth of x. Now let's generalize the halves. Maybe each step is two-thirds as long as the last, or a quarter, or whatever. So now the first step is x feet, the second step is discount times x, the third step is discount squared times x, and the fourth is discount cubed times x. And we have this rule that discount must be between 0 and 1. Let's try summing these steps. We'll call that sum s. And instead of just doing it for the first four steps, let's look at the first n steps. You'll notice that we only sum up to n minus 1 here, because the first step is actually the zeroth in, the math, in this mathematical formulation. And you can see that because x equals discount to the zeroth power times x. Whenever you put something to the zeroth power, it becomes 1, and thus discount to the zero goes away and just leaves x remaining. So there's actually n number of steps here, even though it says n minus 1. As you can see, this currently looks like a mess to solve. On the bright side, we can make it significantly easier. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by discount. This probably seems strange to you, but bear with me for a second. I'm now going to subtract the second equation from the first equation, which is just a regular rule of algebra. So it's the top of the left side minus the bottom of the left side, which is s minus discount s. And it initially looks like the right side is just going to be absolutely awful, but look a little bit closer. Most of these figures repeat, so when we subtract discount x from discount x, both of those just disappear. Same goes with discount squared x and discount squared x, and so forth. And that leaves us with just x minus discount to the n times x. We want to solve for s here, so we have to pull it out from the 1 minus discount on the left side. And then we just divide both sides of the equation by 1 minus discount and we get that the sum of n steps equals x minus discount to the n times x all over 1 minus discount. But that is just n steps. To get infinitely many steps, we have to take the limit as n approaches infinity. Fortunately, n only appears in one place in this equation, so we only have to analyze what discount to the n times x is in the limit. I want you to recall back to this slide where we made the rule that the discount factor must be some fraction, it must be between 0 and 1. And you should already know that any fraction squared is smaller than the original. For example, 1 half squared, or 1 half times 1 half, is 1 fourth. And if you keep multiplying the same fraction over and over and over again by itself, it just keeps getting smaller. Keep on doing that and the number eventually converges on 0. Which means discount to the n times x is, is actually 0 in the limit. And thus, after all that work, we arrive at a fairly simple answer. The sum of an infinite geometric series is the first value divided by 1 minus the common ratio. If you go back to our, our original question, x equals 1 and discount is 1 half. And if you plug that into here, you actually get 2. 
Therefore, Tim Robbins will eventually reach Meg Ryan, and he'll get that kiss.